Interactions with other people can be complex and challenging because people do things differently. Now here's a tool to add to your toolbox. When you want to simplify communications, create Rails. That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. Hey, everybody. Thank you for tuning in. So great to see you. Welcome, welcome, welcome to all of the new fans in far-flung places like Australia and New Zealand. So lovely to have you here. Thank you for being true believers and for signing in week after week. All right, what do I mean by rails and how and when do you use them? Well, first, let's remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There are so many resources about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a unique and powerful force in this industry. Now, if this helps you, tell your friends. You can also submit your coaching or leadership questions and sign up for daily inspirations and weekly videos all at badassagile.com. So go sign up, post your questions today. Now look, nobody likes the word structure. Structure implies overhead and limitations, right? And it's true, too much structure binds us up and slows us down. But structures also let you simplify your interactions and your expectations. Consider this, Agile is full of structure, specifically Scrum. So this is one area where I believe that people get caught up and confused because Agile and Scrum contain just enough structure to keep teams and team members moving towards right action without being overbearing or process laden. Now, here's why this is important. It's not enough for teams to just be motivated or even committed to action. A motivated team doing the wrong thing will move very far in the wrong direction very quickly. What we want to do is combine the power of a motivated group with powerful actions that get us closer to our goals. That means actions that give us the information we want or that bring about the results that we're trying to get. Now, better still, we're not under any pressure to know what that is coming out of the gate. A new team should develop and refine their definition of what is right action over time. So all Agile and Scrum do is create basic templates for you to ensure that you begin with enough right action to get you moving quickly in the right direction, but also, and I think, guys, this is what most people miss. It creates a model for making more and better templates tailor-made to your team and your situation in the future. Here's one that we know and love. Story templates. It's a perfect example. The statement, as a blank, I want to blank so I can blank, encourages us to not be satisfied with just stating our requirements, but to state our requirements in a very specific, structured way. We have to state who we are as actors in the system, what we want, and why we value being able to do that. The template is not only elegant and simple, it's easy to remember, and it's super easy to use. Agree? Now, do people still mess it up? Of course they do. For example, You still see stories all the time, I'm sure. As a database administrator, I want to update to the latest version of the database software so I can have the latest version of the database. But the point is, at least it gets us thinking about value. And we can learn how to write better stories and avoid bad ones as we grow and experience more and as we improve. Even a stand-up is a form of template. The format of a stand-up and the questions that we traditionally ask during a stand-up are designed to help us focus as a team on one thing, our promises and what blocks us from keeping them. These rules are so refreshingly simple that they can often be really hard to follow. 
Often we encounter resistance when we try to impose these rules, don't we? That's perfectly natural, but it reveals why, if we're going to impose any kind of structure, those structures had better be lightweight, simple, and adaptable over time. So I call them rails. Like the rails that are embedded in the Toronto streets on which streetcars travel, they're very low to the ground, mostly non-invasive, unless you ride a bike. And they do the important job of keeping the streetcar going where it's supposed to go. It makes everything so much easier to conduct a system of cars. If the car can't accidentally steer out of the lane, make a wrong turn, or try to squeeze around a corner at an angle that's physically impossible. So your structure should be just like that. They should be rails. Pretty easy to pop out of if you need to, with the most important features being that they're non-invasive and more like guidance rather than rules. So how can you use rails to help your everyday practice? Well, like so many things in Agile, and even for Agile itself, I frequently say it's not a solution to every problem, but it's a tool to add to your toolkit. So only use Rails when you're trying to either gather information, but you're looking to gather that information in a very specific way. So in much the same way that the story template helps you gather information about the system's desired behavior from the perspective of the value it adds to an actual user's life, you could, for example, when facilitating a workshop, Ask participants to provide information in a very specific way that saves you time and effort. So in a recent seminar I did for HR participants, we were looking to solve some kind of problems related to the group's performance and their ability to improve their turnaround time. So instead of simply asking people the question, hey, what's wrong? What's not working? We wanted to ask questions that elicited specific bits of information. We asked instead, What are the top three things that keep you from meeting your objectives? See, that simple adjustment forces people to do a couple of things. First, it focuses the discussion around the challenges that impede their ability to deliver on the things they know they're being measured on, not the things that simply annoy them. And second, it forces them to prioritize. So it'd be really easy to come up with a long list of all the things that we don't like. But often, in the process of doing a big venting session, don't we end up talking about the problems that would be nice to fix, but are not really critical? You see, forcing to choose three causes them to consider the most significant problems, those that cause them pain, on a daily basis. So taking Rails one step further, we could go on to ensure that people don't just vent their frustrations, but aim to self-solve their own problems. So a great follow-up question would be to ask, what are three things we could try in the next 30 days that might help improve the situation? So here we're not just asking people to come up with solutions, but we're focusing their intention on solutions that work and can be implemented or experimented with in a month or less. What this does is help avoid wasting brain power and discussion around solutions that are simply not possible, too complex, or not realistic. You can also use Rails to go beyond the simple collection of information and requirements. You can use Rails when you're trying to elicit or habitualize different behaviors. Often, when I'm trying to teach people to do more outcome-based thinking, for example, I'll force them to use the following template. You've heard me do this before. Anytime they enter a meeting, each participant has to answer, by the end of this meeting, I will have or I will be able to. Why? Those simple rails force people to direct more of their energy during the allotted time to getting some kind of answer or capability that they didn't have when the meeting started. If you believe that meetings should be times reserved for bringing people together to solve problems and move the dial in such a way that can only happen when all the participants are active and present, then that meeting time should be sacred. It shouldn't be wasted on just discussing things. Now, Scrum itself contains other rails and standard operating procedures. There are simple prescriptions about how to run an estimation session, rules for sizing estimates, scripts for running retrospectives and demos, maybe not in core Scrum, but certainly in the common practiced versions, 
And there are also templates for things like definition of ready and definition of done. These kinds of structures can help orient people towards streamlining and standardizing information and creating consistent behaviors and habits. But remember, they're most powerful when they're customized to your team. See, there's one thing you got to remember about Rails. No set of Rails are universal. Now, while Scrum, for example, offers many built-in examples of how to use Rails well, the point is not to stop there. The point is to take the notion of Rails, the philosophy and intention, and extend it even further. What kind of questions are important for you and your team to ask specifically during a demo? Maybe you have regulatory requirements or community requirements that other organizations working on similar projects wouldn't have. In order to optimize and to go faster, we desperately need structures that help us orient towards the right conversations and the right behaviors so that we can arrive at the information we need and the actions that matter in the shortest time possible. And it's rails that allow you to do this. So take a look at your practices today. Look at areas where you spend too much time talking or not enough time acting swiftly and correctly. And you've probably identified an area where Rails could help. So start thinking about how you could structure directions, that is to say instructions, or questions differently so that they limit open-ended answers and unbounded thinking. Now that might sound sinister, so be cautious. Because sometimes open-ended answers are, of course, a good thing. You can't truly get to know somebody unless you let them freestyle sometimes and talk about the things they really want to talk about. So be careful when creating rails, not to create so many standard operating procedures that you become restrictive or robotic. So experiment with rails today. Find out in what places rails could work for you Propose some, test them, and measure them to see if they make a difference. And don't forget to repeat and review and share what you find works well. Folks, thank you for listening. You can reach out at badassagile.com or find me on Twitter at badass underscore agile. I'll see you next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.